This is the DIY BMS version 3 and uh, we're going to put this together today with uh, solder paste and uh, the various components using the frying pan method which I wouldn't recommend for everything but um, we'll see how this goes. You're going to need some tweezers and the solder paste as well and also the uh, needle point for that. If, you, if you're like me and you've ordered your components from AliExpress you also need to sort those as well because they, they normally just send them out in a, in a bag which um, looks a bit like this. So once you've got your um, components sorted out. Um, I normally use, um, start with the resistors. Um, you, you also need to sort out your uh, solder paste. Um, these um, tips um, I've been using on this are um, blunt ended um, syringe needles. Um, I've had success with the green ones which are slightly thicker uh, but uh, I'm going to try it with the purple. It's a slightly thinner nozzle um, and we'll just see um, if we can get better results with that. You need a tiny little amount of uh, paste on each of these components um, or on the, on the actual pads. So what I'm also going to do is uh, apply some flux uh, to these boards. Um, it just generally cleans it all up and it allows the, the components to stick. Um, you only need to worry about the uh, surface mount components on this at the moment. Um, the other thing is not to get your fingers all over the board, which I, I'm not doing very well. Okay. You might find it easier to use some blue tack or something like that as well to hold up, hold the board steady. But all we're going to do for the moment is go around each of the pads and put a dot of solder paste. I'm going to clean the nozzle off. Um, so I'm going to do all the resistors, and that's that's it. You don't you don't have to be super accurate. You just need a tiny little dot. Into each one. What I would normally recommend doing is using or doing three or four boards at the same time. Um, if you go over the edge very slightly, it doesn't matter because um, when you heat the board up, the solder, the solder paste will actually flow back into um, the uh, the pad. What you do need to be careful is these are these really small components. Um, so uh, we'll come back to that one in a second. Um, tiny little dots. It's probably time for a time lapse. Okay, so the board is now covered in solder paste, um, ready for the components to be pushed on. Uh, the uh, 0805 size components are tiny, so you will need these tweezers to do that. But it's just a case of aligning them and pushing them into the solder paste, and they should sort of hold firm. Okay, so I've got most of the components um, installed now for the uh, capacitors and resistors. Um, C3 I'm actually leaving out on this one in a minute just because I haven't got a spare one of those so uh, the circuit will still work okay as it is. Um, we've got the LEDs in, these are actually the wrong size LEDs but um, I'm going to see if they work. Um, so onto the uh, smaller components now which are um, a bit of a nightmare to install. So these are the uh, ADUM 1250 chips. Uh, they come in this tape and reel format normally. So let's tip that out onto the desk. And that one is installed in socket U2, which is this top one here. You can see the little dot on the uh, board is um, for alignment with the uh, dot on 
the circuit. If we start with this one, which is a three pin one, which is quite straightforward to do. That neatly goes in there. Um, moving on to the uh, ADUM chip. Again, it's just being careful how you drop it. And this register 710. I'm using a uh, USB microscope here to uh, zoom in and have a look at uh, the solar pads. It's uh, only a cheap microscope, it's from Amazon, um, but it uh, can actually see quite a bit of detail. So these all look okay, that LED's probably got a bit too much uh, paste on, but uh, let's see what the Atmel chip looks like. Uh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I don't think we have any problems with that one. Okay, so the frying pan method. So here, we, here we've got a uh, cold frying pan, 18 degrees, so I'm just going to warm that up a bit. It's a gas uh, hob. So straight away you can see that's coming up. So I'm going to turn it down to a lowish heat, so I don't want to get in too high. Oh, here's my little helper. Hello, come for some fuss. So the frying pan's got up probably about to boiling point now. I was going to pop the uh, circuit in onto the frying pan um, along with some sub oil underneath it. That's just so it makes it easier to lift in and out. Uh, also make sure that um, you don't get any uh, lead poisoning off the solar paste. So make sure you clean the pan thoroughly after. Now it's just a case of leaving it for probably a minute, minute and a half. Um, I don't think this, uh, these temperatures are actually that accurate but uh, eventually you'll see the uh, solder just start to melt. This is the uh, soldered board after the frying pan uh, back under the microscope so you can see the uh, solder paste has now melted and gone into shiny uh, solder. These all look pretty good, they're not too bad. You can see the flux residue around the outside as well which uh, needs wiping off with some neat alcohol. Yeah, it's all looking pretty, pretty neat, that's good. So these are always the uh, troublesome areas, which are the uh, pins on the chips, but um, that's looking very neat and tidy. That's the ADUM chip. So the only thing left to do now is to solder on the remaining components, which are all through board, um, through hole components, so they're very easy to do. And then you can test it. Uh, don't forget that the positive and negative battery terminal on this is around the opposite way to the other circuits. It's really important.